With the swine flu spreading worldwide, our next guest says companies need to start preparing for the worst before it is too late. Chris Falkenberg is president of Insight Security, a security and safety management firm that advises companies on emergency planning. Chris, thanks for being with us. Uh, downstairs here at the New York Stock Exchange on, on the stairs, there was a little, um, like a soap dispenser, Mark and I noticed, it has been put up. Yeah, just in the last couple of days. I believe to dispense Purell. Uh, that's our preparedness here. If Does washing your hands do anything? It's nothing. Oh, sure. I think washing your hands and teaching people to exercise cough etiquette, most importantly, teaching people who are not ill not to come into work is pretty effective at reducing the spread of disease. But that's one part of what has to be a comprehensive plan to make sure that, number one, the smallest number of people get sick, but number two, mm -hmm. that corporations can effectively operate if, say, 40% of their employees are homesick with the flu. Is that a real scenario? 40%? I mean, in this current situation, I know it's a scenario in some hypothetical senses, but we're not. Is that in your realm of possibility here with the swine flu? It's not so much a question for me whether it's in the realm of possibility. It's in the realm of whether things that we should prepare for. I mean, the majority of things that we think about for our clients are events that we hope are never going to happen. But in mm -hmm. what we do for our clients at Insight is try to take an all-hazards approach and deal with the worst-case scenarios every day and it'll permit these companies to continue and to function um, when really bad things happen. Uh, we do have uh, Tom Costello with us from Dulles International right now outside of D.C. And, Tom, I just wanted to get you in the conversation. You cover aviation and travel. So as we're talking about precautions people can take, then you're stuck on an airplane with people sneezing and coughing and all those sorts of things. Uh, what is the latest on travel to and from Mexico, and is air travel really safe if this is an epidemic? Listen, you know, first of all, a lot of people are wearing masks like this when they are going to Mexico or when they're in Mexico. There's some question about whether these are effective at all, given how aggressive this particular strain of flu appears to be, at least in Mexico. And we should underscore yet again, no deaths outside of Mexico. The United States has issued a travel alert for all flights into and out of Mexico, We've, uh, for, for people traveling to Mexico, I should say. The European Union doing the same thing. Canada doing the same thing. Um, you know, the, the big issue is what really is going to protect you. This probably won't do it, as they've suggested Purell may, but also Homeland Security is telling us there's no point at this, at this juncture in closing the borders because this now virus is, is spreading so rapidly inside the United States, the cat's out of the bag here. And so the question is, how do you address it in your own population? All right, so, Chris, this is not down the road, in your opinion. Uh, companies, for example, need to take action now. Com to educate their employees. Companies need to be activating their crisis management right programs, now. and hopefully those plans not contemplate... Next week, no, now. not next week. Okay, it, it's got to be today. It. It's got to be today, and it's got to be thinking, if 40% of the people don't show up next Monday, how is this business going to operate? This is the time to think about that. And you know, when a pandemic develops, like when any emergency, it's in many cases too late to start a really effective process. But it's essential because the normal things that we associate with conducting business, that, that different employees are going to be there, yeah. it's not going to, it's not going to uh, uh, be feasible. Tom Costello, I just wanted to ask you about no, those masks. No, I, and I don't I know got if... something else to say. Tom Costello, Tom? can you hear us? I'm so sorry. The producer was in my ear, and I couldn't oh. hear what you said. I was I just going to tell you that uh, I talked yesterday to, uh, to uh, Mark Zandi at Economy.com about specifically what happens, if, what happens to the economy if we do get into a situation where people are deciding they're not going to go to work, they're not going to schools, they're not going to go shopping. You know, we're looking at 2.5% GDP contraction right now is the, the estimate for the United States. His fear is that that could really snowball, and we could be looking at a much more difficult year and, the, and this economy, which is already on eggshells, may really struggle even more profoundly this year if the swine flu does come to fruition in terms of kind of this pandemic scenario that people are talking about. Well, there's no question the timing is colossally bad. Yeah. Yeah. Biblically right. bad, some might say. Tom Costello, thank you very much. Great to see you again. Chris Falkenberg, thank you. Thank you.